ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to R Squared Technology. I am your host, Ryan, and let's get ready to SolidWorks. In last Monday's challenge video, we kicked off this series from a user straight up who suggested I try to make a motorcycle truck bed. So we're adap adopting that as more of a trailer type configuration and a link in the description below where you can check out the first part one video where we created the framework you see here. In this video we're going to do some modifications and additions to this framework and then we'll probably start into some of the peripheral parts in the next video. So with that, put on a seat belt or a motorcycle helmet and let's go. Alright, so let's uh, jazz up this frame a little bit here. To start, I'm going to add some structural member to the front here. And I'm going to switch from square tubing because it would create some funky cuts up here if we stuck with it. And you could argue it could be cut out, but mm, let's make it a little bit more simplified, slightly more realistic, shall we? So the first thing I'm going to do is go into my good old 3D sketch here, and I'm going to slap some additional reference lines for those rounded tubes. And for this one, I'm not really going to care too much about whether it's going to be an X, Y, Y, Z, Z, X, because this is kind of going in between all three axes because it's angled two different directions, right? So, because I already have all this reference here, I don't have to really worry about it. It's going to work out. I'm going to save that. Control S as usual. And then just kind of tilting this here. We are going to show that 3D sketch, reveal itself to us. And then we're going to come up here and choose a structural member. Then I'm going to make sure it's on pipe. And I'm going to do. It's pretty robust, but why not? One and a half, schedule 40. This will be the first group. Then I'll do a new one. And that'll be the second group. We can make these as just their own structural member entity, but because of what they are, I'd prefer to just have them grouped within this structural member entity. So select OK with that. Now, because it's not part of this big first group here, it's not trimmed yet, and that's fine. We're going to take a hedge trimmer to it, so to speak. A very powerful metallic one. So, first thing I'm going to do is come up here and choose the Trim Extend feature. Bodies to be trimmed. We'll do this one one by one. However, I can trim both ends at the same time. So I want to do this and this. And this member here, and then you're going to notice how it cut this pipe. It is now part of the cut sheet for that reason. And of course down here, it's also cut accordingly. This will definitely have some unique welding that would take place here for sure. And so I will repeat that on the opposite side, choosing this right side, and this one here, this, and that, and boom, trimmed up. All nice and shiny and cut. It got its hair cut. As you can see here. That may be an OSHA violation cut for a shop to make, but hey, that's beyond my scope. And now I'm going to hide this sketch again, and we'll save it. And then what we're going to do here is I am going to actually go to the top here. Let's just go into the top view. How about that? You know, this is space bar, top view, where you could do from anywhere. You could also do control and five to bring it to top view normal. Alternatively, if you know where you're going to want to go to, you could select that face, 
and then you could hit control eight to bring it normal too. So many different ways to do that. But where we want to go from here is I want this face. I'm gonna to go to a regular sketch because I just want to create a construction sketch line. you see that our midpoint's about there. This is all going to be for the placement of two different things here. So this trailer, I'm going to make it have its own power cell battery, right? That will allow it to ha apply kind of electronic braking that exists in you know, regular trailers. However, the vehicle not only provides power to the trailer and it also provides the signal, whereas the bike is just going to provide the signal based on the brake light to trigger this, which will then trigger the trailer lights and then apply a trailer brake. And we won't go into heavy detail of that technology. It's going to be kind of more of a futuristic concept, but it'll be based off of a gyroscopic kind of chip sensor something like that I don't know something fancy electrical engineer would know better what it would take but the idea is that we're not going to tax the stator on the motorcycle itself by trying to pull the juice to power that trailer brake so I just want to make this kind of as a reference point of okay what can I fit here Let's just say I think it's actually going to be worth setting the battery over here. That way it's not directly on the structural member. So that's okay. We'll go up like such. We'll remove this. And we'll go back here and we're going to do a slot. We're going to do a center point for this particular one. Drag out. Point 0.625. And we'll give this a width of 2.5 inches. That's pretty big. Let's go 2.5, see how that looks. And then we're going to just simply do extrude cut and surface select other there we go and voila I don't want it to cut all the way through the tubing we just need to cut through here so that'll be kind of our initial wire opening because as you can see here, I did not make this through based on this little neck piece here that we've created. However, I'm going to hide this for a moment. Then we can do a sketch and I'm not going to bring this normal to you because it's going to get really messy if I do it that way. I gotta make an opening for those wires. Um, I'll do it anyways. So it's the left side normal to for this. So this all looks like it's in the way here, but it is not. I'm gonna do another slot for this one. 
about here. And I do want to maintain that 5 eighths, which is 0.65. That way you can see that. I'll even go up here real quickly into my options, documents, units. decimal places there we go go in and edit and we're gonna make this a 0.75 inch slot we need to stay within that we're almost closer to a hole at this point let's actually do 0.65 let's see how that looks gotta have room for welded material that's gonna occur there. Hmm, let's go 0.55 on that. I like that better. A little bit more comfortable there. Do extrude cut. can uh, show this so now we've got our wire entry point here then we have a wire entry point in this cross member here now it's angled so it's open on this end and if I were to hide this we can see that there so I don't have to worry about drilling holes, making cuts there, because it can pass through here. So I'll show that. These all have names and numerics tied to them for the cut sheet. So then we're going to bring it back isometric here, and everything's hollow and open here but now to get up to this point here is going to be unique so what I will do for this is I'll select this face here choose a sketch and I'm going to choose a center line and we're going to do it like this and then I'm going to bring it normal to for this particular part and then what we will do here why don't we make a fancy type of center slot And actually, to do a fancy slot, I'm going to do it this way. So, my slot went away on me there. Let's bring it back. Okay. So... there and then we're going to do this and we're actually going to remove this dimension here and I'm going to add a center line across here 
take that center line. I'm going to add another one here. Let's pull it in a little bit more so you can see what's happening here in this busy sketch. So I'm going to take this center line and this center line and make them equal. I'm going to take this center line and this center line and make them equal. Doesn't like that. That's because this one's fully defined. So take two on that. Equal. There we go. <laughs> Look at this funky feature here. And we're going to see if it's going to allow it. It may not. This may actually have to be a two section cut, which is fine. But we're going to try it anyways. for a moment. Let's see if it did the clover cut. I've shot through my ceiling here, it looks like. Yeah, I decided I did. So, no worries. I don't want that face. There we go. Look at this fancy, almost heart shape cut out there. Overkill? Absolutely. And what we'll do is this for a moment to kind of even better view the craziness that we just achieved here. That gives us plenty of room for that. So now that we've come up here, I'm actually just simply going to go on my front plane, and then I'm going to mirror. I may not allow this because of the type of geometry it is. How about that? It did it. Cool. That's well, saving us some time there. All right, so we've done some simple cutouts in this video to allow for wiring to come through and we've added some structural member. In the next video, we'll finish up by cutting out this back section here and then we will move into an individual part. You know what? Let's just throw those in real quick. This will be quick and easy. So we can choose this, control A, normal to. And this is going to be a wire pass through just because the mounting the light into the frame itself, mm, it'd be very small and unique. So for now, I and because I want these structural members to stay relatively strong and not hack too much material away, I'm not going to make the cutout for a break light to necessarily fit in this square tube. This square tube is only two and a half inches. This is some small hardware in a sense. So, 65. five again I just need you could do some pretty decent gauge wire coming through this and then we'll do extrude cut up to surface 
select. And finally, I'm going to choose the front plane again, and I'm going to mirror this. Do the cut extrude. It doesn't like that, probably because it's an entirely different entity. That is okay. We'll just slap another reference in here. Do another slot. extrude cut we need this face we need to select other boom all right so we've got the majority of our wire cutouts there may be additional lighting we and wiring points we may add into these tubes here or something in the top depending but for now we're gonna start with that and we'll break out next video into the wheel mounting area and potentially make the wheel mount itself. That is all I have for you in this part two of the Monday challenge. Stay tuned next Monday for the following video. Thank you for watching. Take care and I'll see you next video.